Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Andrew Cisneros, and today we're going to be installing this Synergy Truss onto this rear Rubicon Dana 44 axle. I'm going to be showing you guys in detail, step by step, how I get this task accomplished, along with pointing out some critical items that will lead us into having a successful install of this truss and other similar trusses. So let's get started. To prep for welding, I place the truss in its correct location and use this mark all paint pen to trace around the whole truss, identifying those weld zones. Now, you don't have to completely strip the axle of paint, but ideally you want to clean half an inch on both sides of that marked weld zone. Doing this avoids pulling contaminants into the actual weld itself. For the first part of the welding, I'm going to be using some Hobart 035 dual shield flux core wire using 7525 asthma shielding gas out of this Lincoln 210 MP and here are the settings. The guys at Synergy did a great job with the fitment of this truss. There is very little to zero gap around the truss. I decided to add an F clamp to hold it in place and get that fitment as tight as possible. Now this is great news compared to other companies that have huge gaps and I'm talking about not a quarter inch, I'm talking about a good half inch between the cast and the truss itself. Remember, I'm using dual shield flush core wire for the tacking and the first part of the welding. I'm placing the tacks between the truss and the axle tubes themselves. There's about four tacks on each side of the axle. There's one area where I do not place any tacks or welds at this point of the project, and that's between the truss and the center section itself. I save that for later. When making these welds, make sure to jump around front to back, side to side. That way, not all of the welds are on one side of the axle. And for setting up your welding machine, the rule of thumb is to set it to the thinnest thickness material. For this scenario, it's 3 /16s. For welding the center section to the truss itself, I'm going to be using some of this Royal 4430 MIG wire. The best part of this MIG wire is that it can be ran using the most common shielding gas for MIG welding that's C25 or 7525 shielding gas. I made this grunt proof for myself by laying out the sequence of welds going from front to back and side to side. Each section is approximately two and a half inches long. Before welding, we preheat. Now, my go-to range for preheating is anywhere between 450 degrees to a minimum of 350. I've never used this wire before, but I wanted to give it a try because it has nickel, iron, and manganese, which is perfect for what I'm doing. I bought it online through Baker's Gas at a pretty reasonable price. If I could do it again, I would definitely have bought the 035 version of this wire because the recommended settings for the 045 version puts me just out of the capabilities of my welding machine. That is definitely not a MIG gun, it's a take towards because I ran out of my 7525 shielding gas. So, to keep things moving, all I did was I fed some wire through the MIG gun, cut it up, and used it as some TIG filler rod. If I have enough consumables, I might TIG weld the whole thing next time. After the welding is complete, I wrap things up with a fiberglass blanket to allow the axle to cool down slowly and uniform. If you don't have one of these blankets, you can use a welding jacket or one of those mover blankets, but the fiberglass blanket is more effective at slowing down the cooling process. I let the axle sit overnight. I also want to go get a haircut, obviously, and I cleaned it up a little bit. I removed some of the spatter. I ground down some of the high spots from overfilling the termination of the weld, trying to avoid leaving a crater. Now, I know I'm not perfect and that's really not ideal, but I guess I would rather do that than have to repair a crack because I left a crater at the end of the weld. Now, remember, and this is key here, any weld under stress with a crater will crack. And that's not the worst part. The worst part is the crack doesn't just always follow the weld. It can also take a turn. In this scenario, it can take a turn towards the truss or it can take a turn towards the cast. Now, that's not a repair you want to do. I know I don't want to. So, let's take a closer look. These first two sections of welds that I'm showing you here were done using the MIG welder and this last weld was done using the TIG welder after I ran out of that 7525 shielding gas. Well, that's 
the end of this project. If you like this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with my latest projects. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one.